Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Mosiah and Christ bless. Uh, my name is Captain Gideon, and to my right, also Abner. Uh, we are here doing the 15 minutes with the captain. Uh, today's topic is going to be no respect for the prophets. No respect for the prophets. Because as we're doing this work, as you can see, many people on Facebook, um, tell, uh, hey, give me some social media. Twitter. Twitter. Instagram. Instagram. And all those places talking crazy about the prophets. The same way they had no respect for the prophets back then, no respect for us today. So let's start with uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 24. The book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 24. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. So the scripture lets you know straight up. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. We are no greater than, the, than our Lord Jesus the Christ. Okay, read on. It is enough for the disciple that he being as his master and the servant as his Lord, if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, Mm -hmm. How much more shall they call them of his household? So, if they're called the master of the house, who is the master of the house? Christ, Jesus the Christ. They call him Beelzebub. What else would they call us? Because the servant is no greater than the master. So, if they had the nerve to call him Beelzebub, what else they're going to call him? What else they're going to call us? Because you got to understand one thing. Christ, he did what? He had thousands of people. Right? Um, heal, he did, those are some of the miracles he did. Heal the blind. Heal the blind. Water. Make wine into, uh, turn wine into water. Felt the poor. Walk on the water. Fed the poor with just three, 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 three fish and a loaf of bread. Great miracles they did. I mean, he did. And they had the nerve to call him Beelzebub. Are we walking around healing people right now? Are we turning fish into... Uh, three fish and two baskets of fish? No, we're just preaching the word of God. So if they didn't believe him who was doing miracles and they call him bells above, what about us? That's why they call us false prophets. But guess what? One day you won't be saying that thing. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 18, 18. Don't take it to heart those things people say about you because guess what? Your father, your forefather, the Christ, they did, they, they did worse to him. Deuteronomy 18, 18. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. I will rise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words into his, in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So Christ was already prophesied in the Old Testament. The scripture said, I'm going to raise a, 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 a prophet from among them, and I'm going to put my words in his mouth. Then Christ come and spoke exactly what was spoken in the Bible. He did not speak his own thing. And he said it. I did not come here to do my own will. So Christ came, did exactly what the scriptures say he was going to do. But what happened? They're still calling names. They still disrespected him. Because what? Some of us, are, we are hard-hearted. Let's go to the book of Luke, uh, chapter 7. We're going to read verse 33 on down. Our people is very disrespectful. And you can see it when you step in the street to teach them the truth. How rebellious they are as a people. Read on. The book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 33. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread. Nor Start at 32. Verse 32. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Now start at uh, 31, sorry. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Whereunto them shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? So the Lord wanted to show you what the men of this generation are like. Read on. They are like unto children. They are like what? Like unto children. They are like unto children. Grown men behaving like little kids. Read. Sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped onto you 
and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. So we have a pipe unto you. We speak, we teach. Guess what? Nobody cares. We t the Bible come out, nobody cares. But guess what? They're still standing there, childish things, in the corner, smoking weed. You follow? Robbing and killing. Acting like little children, chasing girls. But the truth that comes out, they don't want to hear it. They mock us instead, like little kids. Read. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And ye say, he have a devil. So John the Baptist came, he was eating locusts and, and, and honey. He didn't drink wine. You say, they say, oh, that, that man got the damn devil on him. Read on. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking. And ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine beaver, a friend of publicans and sinners. So Christ came and did the opposite. He ate, he drank, he hung out with, uh, with, with sinners. And what did they say? Here come a gluttonous, gluttonous, gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friends of publicans and sinners. So you never heard the expression, damn if you do, damn if you don't? It's to show you those are just rebellious souls. They never cared. It doesn't matter what you do, they're going to still um, behave like little children. Go to um, John, 8, 24, John 7 and 14. So no matter what we say, what we do, you don't, many of us are not going to see us. They, many of you guys are not going to look at us as prophets. It's because you never believe. Just like in the time of Christ, many didn't believe. Read on. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man's letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine but his that sent me. Remember we read earlier that most are going to send us a prophet and he's going to put his word in, in his mouth? So Christ came. He did not go to their schools, to the big, um, uh, um, the, uh, the Pharisees. He didn't go to school with them. So they were marveled at his understanding of the scriptures. Like, damn, how the hell does this man know so much scriptures? But Christ answered them, like, no, it's not me. It's my father because what I'm, what I'm saying and what I'm doing has nothing to do with me. That's what the most I put in my mouth to say. It's the same thing with us today. They're like, damn, how the hell do these guys know all these things about the scriptures? Staying in the street and rebuking doctrine after doctrine after doctrines. Guess what? We don't have a doctrine of our own. Our doctrine is what is written in the Bible. And the reason you think it's something different is because you've been going to church your whole life. And guess what? You never read the Bible. You've been listening to pastor. So when the truth comes out, you refuse to listen to it. You mock us, you want to fight us, you want to kill us, just like they did to Christ. We are the prophets, and we are back, but many of you guys have no respect for us. But one day, you're going to say, damn, surely there was a prophet among us. Um, give me uh, John 8, 24. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 24. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, he shall die in your sins. Christ told them, you're gonna, you guys are going to die in your sins. Because if you don't believe that Christ, if, if they didn't believe that Christ was Christ. Because of that, they're going to die in their sins. Today, they don't believe we are of Christ. They don't believe we're teaching the true gospel. And if you don't receive this gospel, you're going to die as well. Because no man can come to God but through Christ. And if you do not know the true gospel of Christ, how are you going to get to Christ? If you're fighting the prophets who are standing in the street teaching that Christ was a black man, we are the 12 tribe of Israel. And you're fighting that, you prefer to stay, um, no. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Jesus, color doesn't matter. You don't know Christ. Therefore, you're going to die in your sins. Why? Because you are rebellious as hell. Give me the book of um, Mark 8, 31. Because many of our peoples refuse to accept the Lord Jesus. They'd rather stay under that other gospel, that other spirit, that shucking and jiving, cooning spirit. Let's read. The book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. So the thing that happened is this gospel came Christ came to teach, right? Matter of fact, um, we're gonna come back to that. Let's go to um, let's go to John, chapter uh, one, verse eleven. Let's start with this first. 
the book of John, chapter 1, verse 11. He came on unto his own, and his own received them not. So many Christians use that precept to say, you see, he came unto his own. That means he came unto the Israelites, and the Israelites um, uh, rejected him. Read verse 12. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So many people use that scripture to say anybody can be saved. No, 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 no. He came unto his own, and his own did not receive him. Christ walked among the Jews, and the Jews rejected him. Many of the Jews rejected him. But the scripture says, but as many as received him. Who was the one that received him? Because he never taught nobody else but the Israelites. You follow? Let's go to John. Now Now go to Mark 8, 31. Let's see who rejected Christ. The book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 31. And he began to teach them the, the, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. So who rejected Christ? The chief priests, the elders, you follow? Because they already thought that they had the truth. That's why they used to send spies with questions. It's not the same thing that's happening to us. They know we got the truth. This is why they send people to us in the street, in the street asking us questions, and we always answer with what? With scriptures. And that thing bothers them. We go to debates, destroying them. The truth is spreading like a wildfire, just like when Christ walked the earth. The truth was spreading like a wildfire, and those who, are, who already had set establishments, they were fighting against the truth because they didn't believe because that's why Christ said, if you don't believe that I am he, you're going to die in your sin. If you don't believe this is the truth, that you must come back to the Most High God as an Israelite, you're going to die. Give me John 8, 31. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. To those what? To those Jews which believed on I him. I thought he came unto his own and his own received them not. What you got to understand, people, you do not understand the scriptures. The quicker you come to the realization that Pastor Porkchop is not teaching you anything, the pedophile priest ain't teaching you anything, the quicker you're going to come back to these law, statutes, and commandments and repent as an Israelite. Read that again from the top. Verse 31, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed? So if, if, keyword, if you continue in my words, are you disciples indeed? So you must come back as an Israelite, and you must believe. But how do you believe? Because everybody in Christianity say they believe, right? Give me that in the book of Sirach. Let's see how do you believe. Sirach 32, verse 24. Because that's what he had read in, uh, in, in, in John uh, 1, 12. As many as believe. So as many as believe, that could be anybody. No, 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 no. Let's see what it is to believe. The book of Sirach, chapter 32, verse 24. Mm -hmm. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment. He that believeth in the Lord, take it heed to the commandments. He that was the law given to everybody. Give me that in song. He that believeth in, in, in um, he that believeth, take it heed to the commandments. So to believe is to do what was commended. But was the commandment given to everybody? Can everybody believe? Read the book of Psalms, chapter one forty-seven, verse nineteen. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Uh -huh. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. So the scripture clearly tells you, the law, statutes, and commandments were given unto the Israelites. The other nation, God never dealt with them that way. So they don't know that those law, statutes, and commandments, which means they cannot believe. But many of us will believe. One third of us. Two third of us ain't going to believe. Give me the book of Second Esther. To show you the reassurance that as much as we get mocked in the streets, us as prophets do not get discouraged because guess what? They mocked our forefathers before. And some will believe. So don't let the unbelievers discourage you. Uh, uh, Second Ezra chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 36. The book of Second Ezra chapter 1, verse 36. They have um, 37. Verse 37. I take to witness the grace of the people to come whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the things that I say. So the scripture in Ezra say, I take to witness the grace of the people to come. This was written a long time ago, so the people to come was the future people, right? Who they have not seen me with bodily eyes. We didn't see Christ. We didn't see Ezra. We didn't see those prophets. But we rejoice 
when we read the scriptures. Because what? We truly believe in the things that we read. So many of us are going to believe. So do not let the, the, the evil one discourage us from doing the work. We don't, we don't let that happen. We're going to keep doing the job because guess what? We are the prophets. Read. Verse 38. And now, brother, behold what glory, and see the people that cometh from the east. Which are the Israelites. Read. Unto whom I will give for leaders. So our leaders we're going to have in those days are? Abraham. Abraham. Isaac. Isaac. And Jacob. Uh-huh. Hosea. Read. Amos. Micaiah. Joel. Abadias. And Jonas. Nahum. And Abacosophonias. Agus. Zachary. Malachi. Which is called also an angel of the Lord. So in the future, which is today, our leaders are going to be those same men. Give you a little piece of meat. All those men died before. But to come, Musa is going to send the spirits back again. That's what you call regeneration. You follow? So, yes, the prophets are here. But you don't believe that. Give me Jeremiah 1 and 5. You don't believe that. But whether you believe or not, we're not going to stop doing the work. Because we were ordained to be prophets. So we're going to prophesize. And those little ones that are supposed to believe, going to believe. Jeremiah 1 and 5. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. So before Mosai formed us in the belly, he already ordained who was going to be the prophets of the Mosai God. And you got to be a fool not to be able to see who are the prophets of God. So whether you respect us, whether you disrespect us, guess what? We ain't going to stop. Because they disrespect our forefathers before. The people mistreated Moses, mistreated Christ, mistreated all the prophets that have been before us. However, they still had to do the work. Even Jeremiah got to a point, he's like, Yo, I don't want to do this no more. But he said the word was like fire in his belly. So it's the same way today. You're not going to discourage us even though you are mistreating us. Even though you don't respect us as prophets, we're going to keep doing the work. With that, we say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.